Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and in case you didn't know, Jurassic World Evolution 2 is a really fun game. With the announcement of their newest DLC, I thought we should take a moment to analyze one of its standout new creatures. It's the mightiest dinosaur of Cretaceous Asia, Tarbosaurus. Tarbosaurus was first discovered in 1946 in the modern-day country of Mongolia, specifically an area of the Gobi Desert named the Amnagavi province. This fossil, which consisted of a large theropod skull as well as various other vertebrae, was discovered by a joint Soviet-Mongolian team. Important to note was that 1946 was the dawn of the Cold War and the Soviet Union, now an array of countries like Kazakhstan and Russia, just to name a few, was still a thrive... Uh, um, uh, uh, the Soviet Union still existed. About 10 years later, in 1955, Soviet paleontologist Yevgeny Maliev would describe this fossil not as a Tarbosaurus, but instead a species of the existing North American genus Tyrannosaurus, specifically as the name Tyrannosaurus batar. This same year, Maliev would describe three additional theropod skulls based on their varying size from batar. Two of these skulls would describe two new species of a different North American genus, this time the Gorgosaurus, as the names Gorgosaurus lacinator and Gorgosaurus novogilovi. The third skull, which was technically the first of all three, would describe a completely new genus and species of dinosaur, named the Tarbosaurus ephremovi. Another 10 years later, in 1965, paleontologist Anatoly Konstantinovich Rozdesvensky would conclude that Maliev was describing one genus and species of dinosaur, simply at different growth stages in its life. Rozdesvensky would propose consolidating all these specimens into a singular new genus and species, taking the new genus name Tarbosaurus and combining it with the original species name for Tyrannosaurus, Batar, creating the new name Tarbosaurus Batar. Over the next 70 years, classification of Tarbosaurus has varied wildly. To save you the headache, today there are basically two different ways to recognize Tarbosaurus, which often varies researcher to researcher. One is the recognition of the single Tarbosaurus species, Tarbosaurus batar, and the other being Maliev's belief of Tarbosaurus being a species of Tyrannosaurus. This was popularized by American paleontologist Ken Carpenter, who argued, based on their similar size and bone structure, Tarbosaurus was simply an Asian variant of the North American Tyrannosaurus rex. Carpenter did note the heavier build of Tyrannosaurus rex, as well as their vastly different environments. However, he only saw this as justification for a new species, rather than an entire new genus. It's difficult to definitively disprove one or the other, as both largely come to the same conclusion that Tarbosaurus was a close relative of Tyrannosaurus, which is widely accepted. The discovery of an older Tyrannosaur, Alioramus, could add greater validity to the Tarbosaurus theory, as Alioramus could prove to be Tarbosaurus's closest relative rather than T. rex, thus proving two distinct genus. But this is still inconclusive. As of now, you couldn't really be blamed for either naming. For the sake of the rest of this video, we'll simply call it Tarbosaurus to cut down on confusion between the two genus. Since the discovery of the original four fossils, 26 additional specimens of Tarbosaurus have been discovered, mostly found in Mongolia as well as northern regions of China. Interestingly, almost all specimens are still located in Mongolia. This is due to a 1924 law 
designating all fossils located in Mongolia to be national property, forbidding export of any fossils, and only allowing fossils out of the country through lending and permission of the government. Any fossils of Tarbosaurus found outside the country are often due to illegal looting or fossil trafficking, leading to legal battles like the 2013 case United States versus one Tyrannosaurus Batar skeleton. That is real, by the way. Because of US law, the US government had to sue the skeleton and not the collector. Would love to see sketches from that case. The name Tarbosaurus stems from Latin, specifically the Greek words of tarbos, which can translate to a few different words, but is often translated as alarming or terror as well as Soros for lizard, directly translating to terror lizard. The name wasn't really chosen for scientific reasons, but more to describe the terror that would be instilled by this beast. The species name Batar, with two A's after the T, is actually a misspelling of the Mongolian word Batar, with two A's before the T, and translates to hero although why this name was chosen is unknown. Tarbosaurus was a Saurischian theropod, and specifically a member of the Tyrannosauridae family. The Tyrannosauridae were a group of extremely successful carnivores from the Cretaceous period, with most located throughout North America and Asia. Tyrannosaurs were almost always the apex predators of their environment mostly attributed to their large sizes and powerful jaws. The Tyrannosauridae are further split into two main subfamilies. The Albertosaurinae, a group of two Tyrannosaurs identified for their slender bodies and close relation to the Albertosaurus, as well as the Tyrannosaurinae, which is basically just everyone else and group for their relation to the Tyrannosaurus rex. Obviously, Tarbosaurus would fall under the latter. Tarbosaurus is one of the largest members of the Tyrannosaurus, although smaller than Tyrannosaurus itself. It would have reached almost 33 feet or 10 meters in length and about 10 feet or 3 meters in height at the hip. Based on this size, it would have weighed between 4 to 5 tons. Like many Tyrannosaurs, the skull of Tarbosaurus was the most distinctive feature of this beast. These skulls could reach up to 4 feet or about a meter in length, the largest of any Tyrannosaur besides, once again, Tyrannosaurus itself. Speaking of Tyrannosaurus, it is likely Tarbosaurus had a keen sense of smell and hearing to aid in hunting. Unlike Tyrannosaurus, the eyes of Tarbosaurus were not directly forward-facing, making binocular-like vision unlikely. Directly comparing the skull of Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus actually tells us a lot about how this animal would have lived. Tarbosaurus had a thinner and generally smaller head, making it unlikely to be able to match the bone-crushing strength of Tyrannosaurus. So, how would Tarbosaurus hunt? The answer lies in its jaw. Due to a specialized groove on the outside of its lower jawbone, Tarbosaurus was able to lock its mandibles in place, providing the animal with excellent gripping strength to hold on to prey. The exact reason this mechanism developed is debated, a likely reason being to hunt sauropods. The average Tyrannosaur would struggle to grip onto the massive bodies of many sauropods, but a locking mechanism in the jaws could make grabbing onto these creatures much easier, giving the animal more time to tear into its prey. Sauropods in the late Cretaceous were also more common in Asia compared to North America during this time, explaining why this feature would only evolve in Tarbosaurus rather than in Tyrannosaurus. 
Its jaws would have been lined with between 58 to 64 teeth, each measuring about 3 inches or 85 millimeters in length. Fairly average for a tyrannosaur, its general body shape is also fairly similar to a typical tyrannosaur, with a bipedal stance counterbalanced by a heavy tail. Its arms were underdeveloped and small, even smaller than that of a T-Rex. They would have had only two digits, and most likely served minimal function for the creature. Its legs, in comparison, were bulky and powerful, helping to raise its well-built body. The speed of this animal is compared to other large tyrannosaurs at almost 25 miles per hour at full sprint. It would have lived during the late Cretaceous, almost 70 million years ago. It would have roamed throughout Central Asia, particularly parts of modern-day Mongolia and some areas of China. As previously mentioned, it would have been the apex predator of its environment, outsizing other carnivores like the Velociraptor and Alleoramus. Similar to Tyrannosaurus, it is likely Tarbosaurus would have relied on a mix of scavenging and predation. The unique locking mechanism of its jaws further adds validity to the idea that Tarbosaurus would actively hunt living sauropods and large hadrosaurs that it lived alongside. Some of this prey would include large dinosaurs like the sauropod Nemectosaurus, as well as the hadrosaur, Sorolophus. Tarbosaurus has struggled to match the pop culture relevance of its American cousin, but it has still managed to earn a few roles of its own. Its most prominent appearance would be in its home continent of Asia, specifically the country of South Korea. South Korea would co-produce three major projects featuring Tarbosaurus as the premier dinosaur. Beginning in 2008 with Tarbosaurus, The Mightiest Ever, a two-part documentary later released in the U.S. in 2012. This series was similar to 1999's Walking with Dinosaurs, telling the story of a dinosaur's everyday life with a more grounded perspective. This same year, the film Speckles the Tarbosaurus, renamed Dino King, An Amazing Adventure for American Audiences, would premiere, a spiritual successor to The Mightiest Ever, but portrayed more as a narratively driven family adventure rather than a grounded documentary. And finally, a direct sequel to Speckles in the 2017 movie Speckles the Tarbosaurus 2, The New Paradise, once again renamed for American audiences as Dino King 3D, Journey to Fire Mountain. Tarbosaurus has also made smaller appearances in projects like the 2002 miniseries Chased by Dinosaurs, 2007 special Dinosaurs Alive! Exclamation point, 2002 Pick Your Own Adventure special for Camp Cretaceous, 2023 documentary Prehistoric Planet, and of course, as the newest addition to your park, in the Jurassic World Evolution 2 in the Cretaceous Predator Pack. Rising above the shadow of Tyrannosaurus Rex is no small task, but Tarbosaurus' infamy as the King of Asia has certainly earned its significant recognition today. With a bite to challenge the King itself and a ferocity to match, this monster could certainly tar T-Rex a new one. Maybe. Well, probably not. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Tarbosaurus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. I would love to cover some of the other carnivores they chose for this DLC pack. A really interesting selection of dinosaurs this time around. But we're back to viewer-suggested dinosaurs next week, when we look into the basics on the bowl of dinosaurs, Torosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.